What is going on guys? It is Step, and I am alive for those of you who realize that I haven't uploaded anything in like two months but we are back for a very very special occasion and that is the kickoff of Stab League season two and we are back. It is a new season, a new chance to defend our title but I will get to that in just a second. It is a new season, it is a new gen and we are facing an old team, a very good friend of ours, and this is week one, of course. And we are going to jump right into it. So we're facing Balfrey, and if you guys didn't know, Balfrey is the coach of the Colorado Agarons. And we actually played Balfrey in the finals of last season, where we did win. If you guys would like to go back and watch that, you can. Uh, it was the Actually, the most recent video I actually uploaded was the recap of season one. So if you want to go check that out, you can. But anyway, we're taking a Balfrey, and we are actually opening, like I said, the same way we left off last season, and that is by taking on him again. Um, we're back with a new team. Balfrey is a new team as well, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at those teams. So my team, which we'll see in the draft analysis that should have gone up before you see this video, hopefully, uh, that is if I remember to make one, is Mega Heracross and Magirna and Thunderous Incarnate, Landris Theron, Dragonite, Scolopede, Necrozma, Talonflame, Greninja, Delmice, and Milotic. Meanwhile, Balfrey has a team of Mega Kingscon, Excadrill, Tabu Bulu, Latias, Infernape, Slowbro, Galvangela, Suicune, Chansey, Alone Muck, and Alone Ninetales. My Zemons. We get three offensive moves only, of course, uh, to make it a little bit more fair and balanced and less complicated. We have three offensive Zemons. They are going to be Makirna, Thunders, and Landers. Um, meanwhile, Balfrey has chosen Latias, Infernape, and Slowbro. And yep, yeah, so that is the teams. Um, some quick notes before we jump into actual team builder. Um, so for about for I actually did build three separate teams. I built one team with my boy the Flying Bird, one team with my boy Andrew, and one team by myself. And just kind of molded around and thought about what team I wanted to bring. I do expect to see Balfrey in the playoffs. He's a very accomplished player for as little experience as he has right now, but he is certainly getting better. I do expect to see him in the playoffs, so I will have to bring a new team against him later on down the road. So I have several options already, and I might make some changes to the ones I have. But this is the team that I decided to uh, go with and bring, and we will jump right into it as I'll flip over to, show, to uh, the team builder, and we will be on our way okay so here we are with the team and as you can see there is a very threatening squad hopefully on your uh, screen right now and Belfry's team will be propping up on the right side momentarily um, the bonds are color-coded for a reason but I'll get to that at the end just for now know that that is his team and we have built something to counter it hopefully and win the game um, so, an old favorite has finally returned to the Sacred Fire, where it belongs, and that is King Cross, the Mega Heracross. For those of you who don't know, I actually had that in Season 2 of the NPL, and played very well. I love Mega Heracross in league format, and I think that I built a very strong team around it to support it, and make sure that it can do the best that it can. Um, this is kind of the first mod that I wanted to bring on several of the teams that I built um, just utilizing in different ways and as you can see with the Pokemon next to it in the little builder right there I bet you know where this is going an old old throwback that was very successful in the NPO uh, shout out to Mr. Togavar he can tell you all about how good uh, that combo is and hopefully we're able to get similar results this week um, going over the set obviously we have Heracron House Knight to a Mega Evolve with our skill link ability we're carrying Sword Dance, Pin Muzzle, Close Combat and Bullet Seed uh, if you take a look about for his team that's literally all I need to hit it pretty hard um, pin missile and close combat hit pretty much every single thing on this team pretty hard and then we just have bullet seed there to finish off a Suicune fun fact after uh, after swords dance um, we are doing an Oko with uh, bullet seed to max defense max HP Suicune bull nature of course so there's no way he can stop it after it gets a sword dance and um, even so, we're easily to hit KOing it if we don't have the boost yet and need to take it out. Um, what's cool about Heracross is that if it gets a Sword Dance up and it uh, is faster than his whole team, uh, that's basically the game. He has nothing that can survive after a Sword Dance. So, going over the set real quick, we have 80 HP. Um, probably the last thing I probably should have went over just because that's 
all the remainder. A Heracross has really nice bulk on its defenses, so we're just getting a little bit of extra HP for some added overall bulk. Max attack just hit as hard as possible. I know I have Swords Dance, but, you know, th th this thing hits five times with four, with three out of the five moves. So, I'm sorry, two out of the four moves. If I could bring five moves, this thing would be fucking retarded <laughs> or busted. But, um, yeah, so two of the four moves hit multiple times, so we might as well hit as hard as possible on each one of those, and if we get crits, we obviously can hit a little bit harder. Um, lastly, the speed, 168 and speed with a jolly nature, just to outspeed base 60s, which is mostly the adamant top of Bulu. Um, we'll be faster than that, and moving on to our next mod, we have Trev uh, X over T, which uh, Bird was really confused on, but that's supposed to be the... Uh, equation for velocity and uh, fast and uh, Trev has a really iconic team with the uh, Zerkatry and speed pass and Skullpeed. We didn't get Zerkatry but we can speed pass to a lot of threats on our team and that is the set we are choosing to bring this week against Balfrey. Um, we are running a set of substitute protect poison jab and baton pass. Uh, Really just designed to speed past some of our threats, mainly either our Heracross or our Magirna that you see right there. But generally with Substitute and Protect, we are guaranteed a plus two speed. And we can pass that out and hopefully get our Swords in some of the Heracross or our other moves up with Magirna and win the game pretty easily from there. I did debate between Poison Jab and Earthquake um, pretty often, actually. Um before finally sticking with Poison Jab. And the reason I chose Poison Jab over Earthquake was eventually that I could score the one hit KOs on uh, threats such as Tapu Bulu and um, Aloha Ninetales. Yes, Aloha Ninetales lead um, as we get in our set here. Max HP, 176 attack, adamant nature, 28 in, de 28 in spadef, and 56 speed. 56 speed, of course, to naturally outspeed Adam and Tapu Bulu, and... Well, actually, I think this is... Yeah, this is Adam and Tapu Bulu. And then... No, this is Jolly Tapu Bulu. I'm dumb. Yeah, so naturally outspeed Jolly Tapu Bulu. We can either get a Protect up on it, or we can just go for the Poison Jab and pretty much knock it out unless it's like a bulky uh, Lead Seed variant. But... In general, we should be okay versus Tapu Bulu. And this actually Oko's a... Small bulk, not a, obviously not max HP or anything like that, but nobody runs max HP alone, nine tails. So we should be able to knock that out pretty easily. And we can protect up on it the first turn, uh, knock it out the second turn, and then go for a sub on any incoming threat. And then hopefully get out to, again, our Heracross armor or our Magirna based on what he wants to go into. Um, 176 was all I needed to knock out the guarantee the knockout on the um, nine tails. And then we just chucked a little bit of extra in spit depth just because things such as Latias and uh, Galvantula and Slowbro and Suicune and mainly Ninetales because we're going to be in on that hopefully as a lead. Um, I just felt that his special attackers were more threats to Sculpey than his physical attackers and I wouldn't be staying in on physical attackers such as Infernape or uh, Exedrill anyway. So... Just a little bit extra bulk there to help us out. And then we get into the second of the two main threats, and that is Magirna. Now, Magirna is probably a Pokemon that should never be allowed ever, as a po as alluded to by my name, Get Mert. Uh, Mr. Murkrow, good friend of mine, really hates this Pokemon. Uh, struggles against it pretty well, uh, especially when used by a certain Matty Brolic. Uh, shout out to Matty Brolic and... Of course, Mr. Murkrow, go check him out for salty league content, and he's a very good player. And if you want to learn, go learn from Mr. Murkrow. But we are running a Shuka Berry uh, set with uh, Calm Mind, Aura Spear, Dazzling Game, and Shift Gear. Now, this needs a lot to go right, but it's also a very nice last mon slash late game win con. And the reason for that is a lot of things that can hit Magirna pretty hard, such as Excadrill, um, Mega Kangaskhan, and even like a um, random Earthquake Latias are going to be attacking uh, Magirna with um, physical attacks, mainly ground moves, to hit it super effectively. Again, Exedrill can hit it um, pretty hard with Iron Head, but I'm not too worried about that. 
as I am bulky, which we will see in just a second as we're running max HP, uh, 4 in defense, 232 special attack, modest nature, and 40 speed. 40 speed is going to help us out by making us faster than Latias, which is his fastest Pokemon um, after a shift gear. Or Spear Calm Mind literally dents his entire team. Mega King has got extra drill. Um, those are the main ones. Um, Alone Nine Ninetales. Um, th those go down to Aura Spears after one Calm Mind um, with previous chip damage on the Mega Kangaskhan, but we should be able to get that pretty easily with uh, Pokemon down the road. Um, basically, those two moves cover us pretty well, and after we get some Soul Heart boosts, we should be pretty good to go. Um, uh, 232 is really just the amount of attack that I need to hit his things as hard as possible. I could have run max attack, max special attack, but I didn't think it was worth it, and I could get the bulk. Um, the bulk was more valuable because it guaranteed that I was not to it, that I was not a uh, to it KO'd by Mega Kingscon's earthquake. So that's good. Um, 40 speed, like I said, just outspeed the Latias uh, after shift gear, and then yeah. This is really good because one of the ways he can stop the setup nature of my team is um, he can run a Roar, Roar Suicune, but in an instance where I can keep this in the back long enough to dent his team with my other threats and weaken his team to the point where last month when Garena can't be roared out, uh, can uh, set up on Suicune because if he's Roar, he's probably not Calm Mind because he doesn't have enough coverage for my team and he doesn't have recovery because that set would all wouldn't allow him to run a rest talk set and get healthy so definitely something to look out for if that situation arises late game um now we go to one of our main breakers and greninja as you guys will recognize from last season ninja please has returned to the sacred fire into the field i did franchise this pokemon because it's really damn good and i got an eighth round last season and uh yeah so we're running a mixed greninja with low kick gunk shot grass knot ice beam uh, 180 attack, 168 special attack, and 160 speed with a hasty nature. Um, hasty was just so that I didn't mess with them in my attacking stats, increase my speed, enough speed to outspeed Tim and Latias. Um, so the division between the attack and special attack is 180 attack allows us some key, key um, calcs, and damages that we need to get. Uh, 180 attack does allow us to put us in the favor with a 56 or 58 percent chance to just completely one shot Mega Kangaskhan, which is so busted and so good. Uh, definitely something that I couldn't leave off the team for this week. It also does a lot more damage to, than Ice Beam to Excadrill, so that is something we can use as well. Um, Next move is Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot helps us out against threats such as the Alone Ninetales. Uh, I believe it knocks it out pretty easily. And then also the Tapu Bulu. Uh, we do have to watch out for Scarf Tapu Bulu, but um, that'll be a issue that we will scout for, obviously. But in general, that's a nice move to hit it with. Um, Rest on Ice Beam. Ice Beam for Latias. Um... Grass Knot mainly for things like Slowbro and uh, the Suicune. Suicune actually gets to it KO'd by Grass Knot, even if it's a very bulky variant. So as long as it doesn't get Calm Minds up, we should be okay. Uh, low Kick is nice if he brings Chansey too, but I don't expect that to happen. Um, I will get into that in, in a little bit. Um, next, fourth, fifth. We have TTM Burb Tells the Town Flame. This is a very good set that Burb and myself came up with. Initially, I had Rocky Helmet Talon Flame um, because I felt it was the best way for me to. Rocky Helmet plus Flame Body was my best way to defensively check his Mega Kangaskhan. But the more I thought about it, nothing on my attacking, nothing as far as attacks that Talon Flame could actually use in this game were beneficial. Uh, I could have run Flare Blitz for things like Exc Excadrill and Top of Bulu, but at the same time, a defensive set taking recoil repeatedly from its move. Um, was not too um, advantageous in this game. Um, another option was U-turn, but U-turn didn't really get momentum on things. And if he was like uh, a setup variant of Mega Kings got like Power Punch or just his own Rocky Helmet Mons on defensive Mons, 
like uh, if he was like Rocky on a Suicune, that's not a very good set, but could happen. Um, could help us out against Muck, I guess. And then like Braver is the same deal. It would have been nice for Tapu Boo. It would have been nice for Infernape, but at the same time, like. I'm taking recoil on my defensive set. Yes, I'm getting potentially Rocky Helmet damage on Infernape or anything like that. But what I eventually decided to do was I decided to run a sub roost er, sub roost set with um, dual status, so Toxic and Will O Wisp. Um, what's nice about that is not only can I do I have that insurance, um, I have the Rocky Helmet to punish the Kangaskhan for going for fake outs or power punches or whatever it chooses to do and wear it down that way. I have Flame Body to, of course, have a 30% chance to get a burn on a contact move. However, I also have that insurance in Will O Wisp to connect and then burn it for a basically 100% chance because if I remember correctly, Fire types can't miss Will O Wisp. But it's. Base King Khan is just too big a threat for me to have anything and for me to not have a surefire way to stop it. Um, Sub is really good for scouting a lot of his team. Uh, Tapu Bula, we can scout for the Stone Edge. We can scout for a rock move on Excadrill because we do outspeed his entire team. Um, even though we are running Impish Nature for added defenses, we are max speed, so we do outspeed um, his fastest thing, which again, his Latias at 350. Will be outsped by 351. That's why Talonflame's speed is so crucial because you can run a non boosting nature and still outspeed base 110s, which is very nice, especially for this game. Um, again, I can toxic things like the Suicune, I can toxic um, the Chansey just to be annoying and wear it down. Uh, Will O Wisp the Muck, Will O Wisp the Drill. Um, we can also find out if the Drill is Scarf. I do expect him to bring a Scarf Excadrill, but. Uh, we will see what set he actually chooses to bring. Um, we can potentially sub up on the Galvantula, break its uh, sash if it needs to, if it does end up having that. Um, Toxic Nine Tails to stop to deter a um, Aurora Veil variant. Um, just a really nice mon that one v wants a lot of his team because I do again have that recovery with Roost as well. So Sub Roost, good scouter, good uh, status spreader, um, can really neutralize a lot of his. Uh, Physical threats as well as toxic things like Slowbro that would naturally try to beat uh, my town flame. Last but certainly not least, we have Tiger Bait, the uh, Lander Staring. Um, I played with this set a lot. Um, there was the obvious um, defensive set to check things like uh, Kangaskhan, but he could run a potential Ice Beam set, do a lot of damage to me. Um, then I wanted to run Dual Dance, but I didn't really need speed because his team was so slow and I could hit a lot of his things that were faster than me, which was really only Lottie and, um, really only Lottie and maybe like Jolly Drill and Fernape. Hit those things pretty hard, but again, they had covers for me and, uh, like Earthquake distends a lot of his things because the only things that actually levitate, um, are Latios. And I believe that's it. We do, of course, have to watch out for Grassy Terrain, Weakening Earthquake, but at the same time, Tepu Boo should not be able to do a whole lot to me, and the reason I say that is after Intimidate, it's kind of weakened a lot more, and then another thing about Tepu Boo is I, again, have many, many threats other than Landris that can take it out before it has a chance to disrupt that plan. Another nice win con, sub so what I decided on was Substitute, Swords Dance, Earthquake, and Knockoff. Substitute mainly to avoid Annoying things like Poison Touch Muck and um, like just damage in general from the Suicune. Cool thing about the Suicune is if it's like a Calm Mind or like Rest variant, I can play to my advantage and set up on it uh, as long as it's not Roar again. But Earthquake Knockoff pretty much dents its entire team again. We gotta make sure Grass Terrain is gone. But the benchmarks as far as what I chose for EVs on Landris, I have 32 in HP. Uh, 236 adamant nature attack, uh, eight defense, eight defense, eight special defense, and 224 speed. The speed is enough to outspeed a adamant tapu bulu. Um, and then I have 236 with an adamant nature because at plus four that guarantees the oko on uh, defensive Suicune. 
And then just a little bit of extra bulk, hitting a leftovers number with the HP, and then some mixed offenses just for what I had left over. But that is the team. Um, it's now, as far as what I expect about Freda had, this is why I actually color coded the mons um, on his side. And so, first mod, Mega King's on. Number one, it's Mega King is on. It's absolutely busted. It hits very hard. We did ban Seismic Toss, that annoyingly broken set that can two kill every single mon. Uh, in the game, pretty much anything that has a hundred base uh, HP or less, of course, but uh, still a huge threat. Hits really hard offensively. Normal spam is a great um, normal spam is a great typing to have um, on such a strong mod. Has you know parental bond, of course, can hit twice. Uh, has priority and sucker punch. Has setup options in power punch. Has decent special attacks so like he can run you know surprise things like ice beam fire blast um just a really versatile mon and really quite bulky um i don't have the base stats off the top of my head i just know that in general my king is really fat and then base 100 is not a bad speed tier at all especially for an offensive mon um with such bulk my king Scott has to come uh return does a lot to my entire team as far as the sets that I think he could bring, I think that he brings Fake Out just to get off his Mega pretty safely. Um, he can chip my um, things like s Potential Sash, Scolopede, Potential Sash or Ninja. Just chip things pretty well. Again, if he goes for them and gets Flame Body Talon Flame, he's putting himself at risk of getting a burn. But just the overall utility of something like Fake Out is really nice. He obviously needs uh, Stab return frustration something like that you could even run double edge double edge would be stronger but he'd be taking recoil um as far as the other moves i think he needs probably either ice coverage to hit things like landris and uh talent flame for neutral and thunderous that could be potentially packing a z move fighting type uh, z move um Trying to think what else. He could potentially run uh, like Sucker Punch for just some priority on things that are faster than him. Um, I do think he needs Earthquake to deal with my Magirna. Um, that is probably his best way to hit that. Otherwise, it's pretty easy setup. And if I get two Calm Minds against it, uh, it definitely dies, giving me a soul hard boost. And he doesn't really have a whole lot for a plus two or plus three Magirna. So that is a huge threat. He needs to be able to hit that with as many mods as possible. Um, he could also pack Crunch for my Delmise. I did consider bringing Delmise at first, but that'd be a nice way to E to number one block the spin if he chooses to have that as his hazard removal because his team is pretty weak to spikes and uh, not so much rocks, but just repeated switches to spikes can wear it down pretty easily. So he needs a way to deal with that, and because it's a spin blocker, if he has a way to hit my Gilgus type Delmise, that would be. Pretty solid for him. Uh, Excadrill, I think, is another Pokemon. I kind of touched on this earlier that I think he'll definitely have, and that's... I think it'll be a simple set. I think it'll be, you know, Iron Head, Earthquake, um, maybe Rapid Spin, but not as likely because he doesn't do, do that well with Del Delmize unless he gets a flinch um, with Iron Head. But... Uh, and then I think he'll have Pack Rock Slide for things like Sculpede, um, Talonflame, and just... Thunderous, things like that, um, just to be able to hit, do as much damage to my team overall. Again, I think he needs Scarf to outspeed some of my faster threats because, like I touched on, nearly every single thing on my team, or at least a good portion of them, is really faster than a lot of his team because his fast thing is base 110. Wall fast, a lot of things are faster. Even just three mons on this team alone, being Skull, Pete, and Greenwich, and Talonflame, he needs a way to... Um, challenge my speed and i think the best way to do that is to have a scarf for his own extra drill looks like a nice option against me um mold breaker doesn't really come into effect um in this matchup but uh you know it's a nice thing to have you know one thing about extra drill on his team is that he doesn't have sand support so even if he wasn't going to bring that against me it's still a good threat to have in your back but he doesn't have anything that can help him with that so that's one less thing i have to worry about um Yellow, for sake of color coding, yellow is something that he could bring, um, and I'm leaning one way or the other on whether he'll bring it or not, and first one of the yellow mods is Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu hits really hard. It can do a lot of damage to my team, 
But at the same time, I have things that almost guaranteed stop it. Number one being my Scolipede that can outspeed it pretty easily. Um, click the Poison Jab. Uh, pretty much Oko it unless it's some weird like max defense variant. But if he's max defense, he doesn't have as much attack and he can't like knock out my Heracross at all or do very much damage to it at least. Um, Heracross can kill it with uh, Pin Missile. Um, Greninja, of course, gets Gunk Shot. Uh, he may not know this, but Magirna has ways to beat it. Uh, Talonflame is a really good stop to Tapu Bulu, uh, bar like a Stone Edge variant, and even Landris, um, if it's a potential, let me think, Landris does carry, it can get Sludge Wave, so that is another way I can beat Tapu Bulu. Basically, Tapu Bulu is strong, but I don't know if the um, ways that I have to deal with my team is, you know, not enough of a turn for him not to bring it, so... That is not something I'm expecting, but again, he could bring it. Uh, Latias, I believe, is coming. It doesn't have the best matchup against my team, but it is a nice way for him to be able to beat things like my Heracross and potentially my uh, Scolipede, even though uh, Megahorn can do a lot of damage to it. So mainly a good check to my Heracross, and then also probably his most reliable way to get rid of any spikes or hazards I might have. Um, Defog is more reliable just because I do have a spin blocker in Delmise, which actually beats um, Latias, one, Latias 1v1. So that's a threat that he has to consider. But again, I think his team is so weak to hazards, especially spike stack, that he needs some sort of removal. And I just feel that Latias might be a better option than uh, Rapids, but Excadrill. Next is Infernape. And I have Infernape with red, meaning that's probably not coming. And the reason for that is my team overall. Some things are weak to Infernape, such as, you know, Scolipede, uh, Magirna, Heracross, but other things just beat it so easily that it's not really worth it in this game and probably against my team in general. Again, Thunders can beat it. Uh, Thunders isn't here, but it's one of the things that can beat it. I have Milotic that deals with it pretty well. Uh, Greninja offensively checks it pretty well. Talonflame, click Brave Bird. I could be a, I could be a Gale Wings variant and just click Brave Bird and kill the Infernape. Um... And then even defensive landers. Infernape can hit me with the HP Ice, but I'll probably live if I have the right investment. And then I can hit him with Earthquake and he kill Ape because it's pretty frail. Um, the one thing I will say is that if he brings Infernape, it is definitely one of his, his um, you know, um, options for either a Z move. Uh, like Z, Z Earthquake could be a thing that he might bring to kind of check my Scolipede and my Magirna if he doesn't want to take the uh, recoil. Uh, he could also bring like Z Thunder Punch for damage on my Lotic. Um, a good way to uh, kill Talonflame. Uh, he could bring Mach Punch to revenge my Greninja is a pretty good option. And then lastly, what did I have lastly? Uh, there was one really big point that I wanted to, br that I wanted to bring up. I'm trying to remember what it was. Hmm, I forget. <laughs> yeah, so it could potentially be Scarf. Yeah, Scarf is another good, uh, because again, if he's Scarf, he can beat my Greninja. He can beat my Talonflame if he has Stone Edge. But if he brings it, I think it'll be Scarf. It's a good Scarf candidate. It's either Scarf or Z move. So that is something to consider. Uh, Slowbro is something he could bring, um, mainly two reasons for this. Number one, if he wants speed control in the form of Trick Room, it's a good Trick Room sweeper. Uh, Balfrey loves Slowbro, so just the uh, kind of attachment he has might um, influence him to bring it. On the other hand, I have a lot of things on my team that beat Slowbro or deal with it pretty well. Um, I have a Thunder, which obviously isn't here. I can Nasty Blood up on it, knock it out. Um, Slowbro, unless it's very offensive, can't actually knock me out with Ice Beam. Again, Heracross beats it. Um, Scolipede, even Scolipede can damage it really, um, can hit it really hard, not damage it really hard. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but can damage it pretty hard if it has the Mega Horn. Uh, Magirna can pretty much beat it because it takes any special hits that it wants to go for. Greninja has Grass Knot, has Dark Pulse. Uh, Talonflame. Not the best answer to Slowbro, but I have things like Taunt to stop his recovery. And then even Landris, if I, you know, get up enough boost, I can knock that out pretty easily. Galvantula, I think the main reason he would bring it was either for, was mainly for Sticky Web. However, Sticky Web works to my advantage if I'm a Trick Room team, so that might be a deterrent. But I, at the same time, I think that he might, you know, 
see Gal Ventral's value of getting staked away for his team over the benefits that it might bring from mine. Suicune, I have a lot of ways to beat that, but at the same time, if he's expecting a setup uh, oriented very variant of team uh he might bring a roar set on that so i do have to be careful of that chancy i don't think is something he'll bring at all it's not a very reliable rocker i have sub on a lot of my mons that can uh live and avoid status i have dome eyes which can beat down chancy so seismic toss isn't that great of option and then mainly chancy is also a setup variant for setup mon for setup water slash bait for my Mega Heracross. I can get SD basically for free on that, and if I'm a subset, I beat it. Anyway, so Chansey is probably the one mod that I would expect him not to bring at all. Um, another mod that I'm pretty sure is definitely coming is Alone Ninetales. It's faster than a lot of my team, um, base speed wise. Uh, Ice and Fairy do quite a number on my team, and then mainly the other boon that Alone Ninetales does get is, of course, Aurora Veil. Um, to kind of stop my setup, he could set up an Aurora Veil, weaken me, and, you know, just start going in with uh, threats like Excadrill. Maybe it's SD variant, maybe it's Power Punch Kangaskhan, but if my damage output is weakened, it can open up a door for him to kind of uh, reverse start beating my ass. So that is the second to last mod. And then we have a Muck that he might bring. The main benefits of Muck, um, basically. Curse set does pretty well. Again, I can burn it, but if it's a rest curse set, that's not really a viable option. He can spread status with his poison touch ability, and then probably the main reason he might bring the muck is, again, um, it's one of his best ways to deal with my Magirna. Even if I have a plus one, I don't actually two-hit kill muck. It's one of the only things that, on his team that can take two hits from Skull, uh, from, uh, not Skull of Bead, um, but uh, Magirna, so that might be a reason for him to bring that. So basically, I have four mons being... Uh, Excadrill, Mega Kangaskhan, Latias, and Ninetales that he are probably going to come, and then I have you know a few other a few others that you know could come but are probably not going to. Um, so really four so really four mods that are pretty much guaranteed, and then two toss ups. And of course we did prep for everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this team builder. It's kind of long, but I felt that since this is the first game, it was a good idea to kind of bring up the thought process between. All the ones on my team and how I'm going to try to use them for a lot of the season. And anyway, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, leave a comment if you so desire, and subscribe if you have not. Anyway, guys, I'm Stab and I'm out.